everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. It's good to have you back. Uh, so it is January. It's cold in the garden, but there's still plenty of things to do and take a look at. So I'm going to walk you through a couple things today. We'll talk about my composting system. I'll give you an update on my bird feeder, and I'll also show you one of the cloche row covers that I have put together in the yard. So this is the garden cloche that I got from um, Gardner Supply Company. It's made out of chicken wire and some other supports. I chose to put it out in my yard throughout the winter because I think it looks gorgeous. Doesn't it look pretty? It's got a little ice and snow on it and it's actually amazing to see that it seems to be keeping the bed that's underneath of it slightly warmer because you can see that the snow is slightly more melted in that area than it is to either side of it. So it's very interesting to me. All right, well, let's go take a look at where I moved my bird feeder to, and then we'll talk a little bit more about compost. All right, so here we are. I had my bird feeder a little closer to the house. It was near a brick wall and it was near a bush that's going to be a beautiful hydrangea this year, but the bush is rather small and it still needs to grow to be able to provide some cover for the birds. Birds really like it when you have a feeder near something that they can jump off of it really quickly to and hide from predators or other things, especially when they feel afraid. So I moved it next to my hawthorn tree, which I know the cardinals and other birds really love. They like to eat the berries on it, but the berries are almost gone for the winter. And already I can tell the birds love this location much better. And I can still see it from the window while I'm working during the day. So it's super exciting. I've had the bird seed in there for about a week. There isn't a lot gone yet, but I can tell that it's gotten smaller. And again, I'm seeing lots of birds come to it. I don't think they're completely out of their food that's naturally sourced yet this winter. And it is the first year that I'm feeding them. So as we watch it, we'll see how quickly they eat the bird food and how quickly I need to refill it. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is compost. So I'm going to talk you through a little bit of my system. My system starts with this small bin. I start in the kitchen and usually I put in all sorts of scraps. My husband does as well. We started out with just a Tupperware bin. Um, it got dirty. It was messy. My husband didn't like to take the top off and put it back on. So I ended up having to do all of it. Well, I really liked the idea of providing something that looked nicer in the kitchen. Um, and also something that was easy to grab onto and had a handle and that my husband could easily take the lid off with quickly and put the food in there and not feel like it was gross. So this beautiful bin I got on Amazon, I think it was around 20 something dollars. It was a Christmas present for him um, and myself a little bit. So um, this lid comes off and inside of it, there's a nice charcoal filter that charcoal filter helps keep any odors in, but there's really not much because um, we just fill it up with all sorts of kitchen scraps and I'll get a little closer so you can see. See, it does look kind of gross, but it doesn't really matter because it all breaks down rather quickly. One of my favorite things to put in there besides kitchen scraps is my used coffee grounds. Don't put ones in there that aren't used yet because they'll have too much stuff in them and it will harm your plants. But if you've used them, it's a great source of nitrogen for your compost bin and will help break it down. So let's go take a look at my two um, giant compost bins that I start my compost in and then I'll take you in my way back and I'll show you my compost bin back there that I also use. Okay, so I think everybody has an ugly area in their garden where they try to hide the little pile that they have. My pile's pretty big, but it includes two really big compost bins. They're open on the bottom, so it helps to keep the moisture in, and then the worms and other kind of uh, life can just climb up underneath of it. Um, they also have some small doors on either side, and then the tap um, opens up as well. The doors on either side that uh, push up. You can take a shovel and you can dig out some of your uh, compost that's ready. But uh, I actually have a process that I like to do every year where I simply take once a year and I take the tops off of these. I take them apart. 
I move them aside and um, I take all of the big stuff out that um, doesn't that still needs a long time to compost and then I put um, the small stuff that's well um, aged compost and I put it into my wheelbarrow and then I cart it around and I put it on the garden where I need it. So this year I got at least a whole cart full of fresh wonderful compost that will give my garden the nutrients it needs this year to grow some wonderful vegetables. So why don't you come in and take a closer look. I'll show you how I empty the compost. Once I have a small bin filled, you can see we have lots of kitchen scraps in here. I even will throw in some paper towels, um, paper, brown bags, um, Anything like that is good to put in here. And it starts out as a rather large pile, um, but it will break down. So you can see I have a paper bag in here. I've got, these are mums, so they haven't really broken down much yet. But this is the top layer. And so the top layer usually looks like it has a ways to go. There's lots of bacteria, insects, all sorts of things in here, worms that help to break it down over time. I do passive composting. What that means is that I don't do a whole lot of work. I let the compost do its own work. I let nature break it down for me. And then, like I said, every year I'll take these apart, scoop out whatever big chunks are still in it, and put it back in. When I do that process, I usually end up with only about half of one bin. And um, that's all that's ready to go and get the pile started because it will still have lots of good bacteria in there and all sorts of things that will help the next batch get started. And depending on which one is the most full at the time, as the other one goes down, I'll go ahead and put some more in the other one. So you can see this one has a little less table scraps in it right now and lots of ferns from the fall that I cut back. And it's already almost down halfway. So by springtime, it'll probably be down another four or five inches and I'll be able to start filling it up with green material. You watch lots of composting videos and they'll tell you all sorts of things. Like you have to put in a certain ratio of green to a certain ratio of brown. Uh, one of the things that I like about brown paper bags that they might give to you in a grocery store or cardboard um, that doesn't have tape on it, take the tape off that comes as a box that gets delivered to your house is you can take that and layer it with any of that household waste that you have that way you don't have to worry about um, any smells um, the only thing that i sometimes do to this that makes it a little less passive is putting some water on it in the summertime when it gets really dry out that just kind of helps keep the temperature up and keeps all of the things that are alive in there like bacteria and insects happy and keep on grinding it down all right now i'm going to take you in our way back to the big compost bin that we created um, and show you how we use that okay so this compost tumbler was the very first compost bin if you will that's man-made that i got i got it because i heard all sorts of wonderful things about it i it said how fast it worked yada 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 a couple years later i hate it i mean i don't hate it that's a strong word i just don't really like it it doesn't work as well as those big other bins work for passive composting you do have to turn it it doesn't collect rainwater like the other ones do it doesn't go down into the ground so it doesn't get all of that wonderful life that comes directly out of the soil to help eat it so i've moved it back here in the way back i'm going to continue to use it but it just takes a whole lot longer maybe it's great for those of you who do more active composting and are willing to you know pour water into it and spin it every day but that's not my game i don't like that so um, it's all right i'll continue to use it i won't get rid of it but i'm just going to use it in a different way back here so next to it, I have this really great big bin. This we built last year in the fall. It actually was a day when we um, first got a whole bunch of snow and my husband and I had um, gotten all of the materials together and we were planning to do it and it just started snowing everywhere. And we asked ourselves, do we really want to do this thing? We thought, why not? 
what difference does it make if it's snowing? It might be kind of fun to make in the snow. I kind of thought a little bit about my grandma and grampy who used to build things out in the wilderness when we were doing it. It was super fun. So we got it done. We used just the same stuff that I put around um, my trees when I try to protect them from the deer. So it's four foot high fencing that comes from the Home Depot in rolls. And um, my husband used a staple gun to staple it to these posts. And then rather than putting the post directly into the ground where eventually they'll rot, we bought these um, concrete blocks that are hollow in the center. And what that allows us to do is put the four by four straight down into it. And so if this does eventually rot, which all wood does, um, we can just get another four by four um, and put it in the exact same concrete block and redo it without much work. Um, so what I primarily use this uh, bin for is leaves um, and larger compost items that I can't easily fit in uh, the bins up there. Uh, it may be larger sticks pieces, um, pine type branches, uh, things that I don't burn but I don't really want to you know put in a pile somewhere. Um, I'm a big gardening for wildlife proponent and so even back here, we'll throw things like our whole pumpkin. That way I don't have to cut it up. And one of the cool things about that is sometimes some of the animals come back and have a little feast. So come take a look. You can actually see where the animals found the pumpkin. And um, they've actually dug little holes in here to be able to have a little bit of a feast during the winter. So they're happy, but it's also going to break down for me. After they eat, they're going to go to the bathroom. It's going to create some uh, wonderful fertilizer on my lawn or whatever other plants there are nearby. We've got a lot of rabbits and squirrels um, and tons of deer. On this other side here, you'll see I have five bales of hay. These actually came from a neighbor's house. She was decorating at uh, Halloween time and for her son's birthday. And she had them all around and didn't know what she was going to do with them. So I thought, why not just pick them up and put them back here? I can use this as wonderful, um, uh, any kind of mulch or to bulk up areas that I want to bulk up in the yard. I can throw it onto the compost pile when I need more dry material. Um, so it's really going to be great to use. So again, there's a lot of different videos out there for you to watch related to composting. Um, I highly recommend that you find whatever uh, way actually works best for you because it's different for everyone depending on how, your, how big your yard is, how much compost you actually have, how much food waste you have, what materials you want to compost. The list goes on and on. There's tons of videos out there on YouTube and I'll try to put a couple of links for you in the description box below. Thanks so much for joining me today and checking out how I do my compost. Give me a thumbs up, like my channel, subscribe if you'd like to join my channel and click that notification bell if you wanna get notified the next time a new video pops up. Thanks again, bye.